is a 1 6, you can turn it into a 3 4, and then. Oh, cut, he also. Oh. And a pump spell. Yeah. Color is now a 6. Those cards are not. But he's got some giant monsters on the battlefield. That's pretty hard to do. I think Alex Hay really wanted to. Do... Alex may have like a turtle that would be lethal. <laughs> right? He could he could somewhere to get. A turtle that would be lethal. This infinite echo is pretty funny because I've got the audio on and the mic on. It's cracking me up, but now I'll mute that so it stops happening over and over and over. It's kind of funny that it could go on for all eternity. It's kind of funny that it could go <laughs> Alright, um, what's up? Uh, yo, yo, yo. Let's, let's go play something. Anything. Let's play something, anything. Just God, give me magic. No deep thoughts or anything. No, let's experiment with a certain deck. We're just going to play like one deck and switch to another, and one deck and switch to another. And we're just going to shake it up. Ah. Neon has a opinion about this particular deck we're playing, and he says, let's ignore people's strategies and mill the crap out of them. Yep, that's right. Interaction's hard. Actual control is hard. But milling is easy. All you do is play one card and draw cards. It's great. Oh, I'm a fan too, but you're not wrong in your opinion. When I say you have an opinion, doesn't doesn't mean you're not a fan, I promise. <laughs> yeah, look at all the look at this amazing collage of garbage. Alright, let's do it. <laughs> um let's see. If you could discard this card, discard it into exile, and you do cast it for its madness cost, or put it in... So you're casting it for the madness cost. So this says when you cast it, it reduces. So this should reduce the madness cost. That makes sense, but for some reason I just struggle with it, because I the madness, I guess, is printed in the ability text box. I always forget. Um, so Brawl, eh, thought you were off it. Well, I'm off it in the blue-red control. This is, this is blue-red, uh, tutelage. This, this is a whole different animal. Alright. This, this ain't blue-red control. This is, this is a mad, this is a mad mill, baby. This is totally different. <laughs> it's, in fact, it's only got a couple of cards in common. <laughs> Yeah. 
And Brawl definitely wants to help you mill things, draw a bajillion cards. Although this, this hand has been pretty lame. Not the hand I was looking for. Neon was asking me a question earlier about Twitch. So it makes me think that you're looking at doing more stuff on Twitch. So how is Twitch treating you? I'm curious to hear your experience. Harry shared mine, share me yours. That's what I'm trying to say there. All right, let's go get languished, except we won't. And... Wow, our, our opponent, I'm guessing they have another color, maybe? Maybe they have another color they're not playing? Something they hide in from us? So, he could have that card that destroys target tapped creature. I guess that's a good enough reason not to use my Jace right now. So, but if he had that, he'd use it on Baral, right? Yeah, whatever. I mean, that's almost like a reason not to even attack, since we don't probably win by damage, but who knows. I mentioned the music thing, it relaxes me. Twitch says no. Yeah, that's annoying. The, I don't know, the music stuff, I've just given up. So, in-game duels music is what you get. I, I, when I first got my stream for a long time, I tried to figure out how to make the music happen. Wow, our opponent, that's it. They've had enough. Well, I'm going to play these out, because I want to actually play each deck. But, I mean, come on. What, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> Hitting land drops? I mean, did he keep it all land handed? Oh yeah, that's what I do. I concede right before I cast my mythic rare. All the time. Let's get looting, shall we? Don't forget the broken concentration has that madness kicker. And now we're gonna get a loot off Brawl. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Oh, perfect. Hallelujah. Just going off. Just just going crazy over here. Um, hmm. So right now we have a choice. We can loot now with Jace and we don't flip it. Or we can cast our take inventories and flip Jace. So the question is, what's better? To have one loot this turn and one loot next turn? Or to possibly have Jace die? And I think I'll just... I think I'm fine with just uh, one loot right here and a flipped planeswalker. Thank you. Let's try to find that... That gosh forsaken tutelage. You must be in there somewhere, tutelage. Where are you? Definitely find more land, although Brawl almost got discarded right there. Keep it coming. Living the dream, except there's no tutelage. In my dreams, there was a tutelage. I'm not seeing this tutelage anywhere. Hello, found you. Uh, he's mono black to this point. That doesn't get rid of tutelage very well. How many cards did we draw that turn? Did anybody keep track? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten cards that turn. <laughs> oh, Marikas. Yes, tutelage in the hizzle. We're milling. We just drew 10 cards before we found our tutelage, which seems like such a waste. Our opponent is playing mono black. All they've done is play five lands and a Nixilis. And, oh, well, something tells me they needed one of those. What do you guys think? Our opponent left, so uh, making fun of the AI is totally different, of course. Our opponent has already uh, left the game, so don't worry. I'm not bashing. I'm not bashing his luck to his face. Some of you I know care deeply about that. Uh, my opponents always play tutelage before me, even if I'm using multiple cathartic reunions, and they aren't. Oh, uh, I guess you're talking about tutelage mirrors? That's a weird sentence, Hanzo. <laughs> <laughs> that or it's too early for me to read. It could that could all be on me. 
Get him. Hey, I play two I've played tutelage before. I just obviously not much. <laughs> okay, so that's what's going on over here. Hey, our opponent knows how to put planeswalkers in their deck, so that's a good thing. Let's just go to town, shall we? So this would draw three, but it would exile, so my last take inventory wouldn't draw three, wouldn't draw four. I guess I can deal with that, but I need to discard cards anyway. I'll just go there. I, I definitely don't mind discarding some of this garbage. Like, you guys don't appear to be getting cast anytime soon. Eh, I don't need this other mount, though, either. Oh, but I do need an untapped land to visions. I'm definitely not casting you anytime soon. Uh, this is the way it always feels at, an end of, at the, near the end of a format. Everything gets a bit stale. Everything gets a bit tired. Everybody wants to move on. I don't blame you. I don't blame any of you. I'm right there with you. Especially this format, it's just, just hasn't quite, I mean, I think it's been better in duels than standard. I'm looking forward to a new standard set more than a new duel set, just because I want the coverage to be more entertaining than it has been. Uh, this duels has actually been really good, I think. Um, I said the same thing coming out of the last set. You can, if you, you can play almost anything, almost any kind of deck. You can name any color combination and then you can name any kind of general strategy, like, like uh, you know, mid-range aggro, and you can play it, and you can rank 40 it, and it's not too hard. It's it's not like you're swimming uphill against Gruel Ramp or um, four-color planeswalkers every single match. It it's really it's a much better format than I think Duels has had. I would prefer the vehicles get beaten up more often, but I think that most people don't play vehicles all the time, don't spam vehicles all the time, which is good for everyone involved. Because it is duels, it's still casual after all. And we've seen in the tournament that even all those, uh, you know, people who picked up vehicles and just decided to crush everything, it's it hasn't been easy sledding. And the creative types with really weird deck builds, uh, I'm looking at you, uh, mono blue flyers, Demir midrange, like the the really kind of different sort of decks have done just fine against the vehicle decks. So it's been a great format, I think. Absolutely great. I'm really happy with it. Happy about it. Woohoo! <laughs> and uh, Neon uh, or not Neon, uh, Hanzo says I'm just experimenting with this last month. Still having fun. Yeah, I I built some decks uh, in the last 24 hours that I haven't tested in this format. At least not extensively, so it's still not over. There's 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 a lot of things to be done. And today I think we'll just run around. We'll play every we'll play one deck and switch. We'll just this will be uh, rapid fire. This will be speed dating. So mill the crap out of them. I know people watch this for decks, and I'm not going to copy-paste deck lists every single time that I switch, so we'll just drop in and run through the decks really fast, especially the ones I know people care about, like a lot of people probably want to, people watching later want to see this tutelage build, because I get emailed about a tutelage deck all the time, so we're doing mad, this is mad mill. It's using the madness mechanic as well as a few cards like Bombardment and Take Inventory that get better the deeper in your deck you get since you're trying to draw your deck. So we got Lightning Axe, we got Jace and Baral. We've got, don't forget, he has a Madness E trigger when you counter a spell, and we do have some ways to do that. We have just the frickin' wind. Uh, we have Take the Inventories and the Reunions. No surprises there. Probably not for the Oath of Jace either. Two Legend Visions, the whole point of the deck but broken concentration yeah it's got madness don't forget that i often do and then we got fiery tempers and then uh, a pair of expertises to kind of reset the battlefield if we spent our first four turns drawing cards and the opponent spent their first four turns playing creatures you got to catch back up and it can sneak a tutelage onto the battlefield in the mana base i have a drown yard temple maybe that shouldn't be there i have a sanitarium that should be there 
And uh, wind over disperse, yeah, cause of madness. It's madness, baby. That's why. That's why it's there. We gotta be mad. Gotta be mad to run this thing. When it works, it works like the machine. When it doesn't, it's a cluster. Uh, let's now go play. See, this is Mad Mill. This is Madness. They are very different decks, just so you know. Uh, this one doesn't tutelage anything. This one is basically all, an all in kind of madnessy combo Grixis thing. So we've got. Uh, the point, of course, is discards for some kinds of effects and then play things for their madness cost, and then uh, bring back the things from the graveyard to do weird stuff. It's, I don't know, it's it's good and it's bad. It's such a weird deck to play, you'll see. But um, one thing about it that's funny is I'm trying out this brain in a jar because I often don't have as much mana as I want for madness effects. So we're even running that in there. And uh, yeah, uh, the thing I'm thinking I need though, like, I'm looking this deck up and down, and... Hmm. I think I want the From Under the Floorboard, so I can, like, basically Madness Fireball something. More than I want Giss's Bidding now, with some of the changes. So I'm gonna test some of that. Because, with Brain in the Jar... With Brain in a Jar, you can really fire this thing off, right? Or you can fire off for free the Madness spell and then play this? I don't know. Let's see which is better, shall we? We'll just we'll just we'll just do that little test. All right. Anyway, this is a full-on wacky deck that looks horrible. It it looks like such a train wreck, but it's so weird to play. It is so hard to play. There are a million ishy decisions. <laughs> A million little stupid decisions in these decks. You'll see, I hope. If if there aren't decisions, we're probably losing. I'm getting obliterated. Because our draw never worked out. Yo, para para. What's up? We got a small crowd today, but it's the regulars, and God knows I love you regulars. You guys, uh You're a big reason I uh keep coming back. Because it's kind of like I get to hang out and play games with my friends. Which reminds me of college. And my childhood. Why do zombies have to come in tapped? Because there's... I don't know. I'm so exhausted. So, see, this hand is three basics and lacking one of our colors. Mulligan? Heck no! We got all this card draw, baby! I'm sure everything will work out. I mean, when you keep a hand like this, you are committing. And I mean, I am absolutely committing to uh, not casting anything that affects the board for like three turns. <laughs> Is that a good idea? Not always, especially on the draw. Pretty bad, <laughs> but here we go. Um, why is Kozilek's return in the deck, you may ask? And I will answer, because I forgot to take it out. This should not be in the deck anymore. Um, I copied this deck from an Emerge deck that had Eldrazi. This deck doesn't. So yeah, this 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 should have been taken out. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Vampires. Oh good. Now we're gonna draw cards for a long time and do nothing. Way with you, way with you. <laughs> the good news is it doesn't even matter. That card could be a white card. That cathart the um <laughs> this Kozlex return could be a white card and it wouldn't matter because we're just gonna discard it anyway. <laughs> There's our MVP, Call of the Frickin' Bloodline. I don't know why, I wanna like attach frickin' to everything in this deck, cause it's such a weird deck. <laughs> MVP right here, you'll see. Card's nuts. And we're putting out a Blood Hall Priest, maybe? Oh, nope, just that, that little four ones are. Alrighty, you got it. Once we find a way to draw extra cards, of course, Call is like going off. And once we find Madness cards, of which we've drawn Squat Zero, Call is going off. All right, yeah, away we go. 
I like your Jace theme deck. Yeah, buddy. We're gonna Jace, we're gonna take the Oath of Jace, then we're gonna take the Oath of the Oath of Jace. The Jaceiest Jace deck. Yeah, I figured he had that piece of crap. That's annoying, but it's okay. Basically, we can discard a card here. Yeah, can't now, but that's fine. I didn't really want to. It's like you could discard a card to gain four life, five life, but next turn I can discard a card to gain six life. Seven life. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, still no madness cards. That's really lame. We do need those. As right now, we're just kind of a horribly inefficient and sad combo y deck. So, what I would most likely d like to draw, and I would most enjoy drawing, would be. A fiery temper to kill this thing? Unfortunately, we don't know what we're gonna draw. A fiery temper, just the wind. So we don't know what to leave open for discarding to the oath. So right now, it's 50 50. There are four fiery tempers, there are four just the winds. There is no way to know which is better, which I'm going to draw, if any. So you've gotta just pick. You just have to pick. And I'm going to pick. Fiery Temper. I'm feeling like a Fiery Temper is coming. Ah, none of the above. All right. You guys can go. I don't think I'm gonna cast you anytime soon. We did pick up our another black s or wait, we had that. But yeah, we're gonna need that other black source so we can do Haunted Dead Gis a bit in. Alright, he's got Kali T's. That is annoying. We're gonna have to actually draw removal at some point here. This is getting silly. Uh, so I don't have any plans to put Jace out there because of the Kali Taz, so I'm gonna let him go. I still may need the lands. Preserve me. Then we have to choose if we're going to put out the key to the city and do the Giss's bidding. Jesus, Pete's can't draw. Can't draw a, a Just the Wind, a Fiery Temper, or a Lava Axe. Really could use them. So do I dig for them? I think I have to at this point because I could keep spinning my wheels. I don't think that'll get me anywhere. And again, I'm gonna gamble on Fiery Temper first. Although, wait, I can put this out. Yeah, now I can hit just the wind or Fiery Temper or both. Let's go. <laughs> like I said, this deck has a stupid amount of decisions for the amount of stupid cards in it. Wow, this can't, can't buy a break. Can't get lucky. Luck not allowed. Denied. Um. Okay, I guess we just keep chumping. I guess I can make something this turn too. Oh yeah, yeah, put that back on top. That makes me happy. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> That's not the quickest clock in the world. Bring it, baby. <laughs> the, the next third of my deck is all removal spells. I just gotta buy time. Yeah, he can grow his Kalitas, that's fine. Okay. 
Wow. Um, your boy doesn't have trample, homie. Just someone should let you know. That's first strike. That ain't trample. Still got to eat the damage. Wouldn't have gained the life anyway because of first strike, which was a cognitive error I made before. Hello. How you doing? Uh, where have you been? You are late. Get in there. Freaking Kalitas, though. See, the thing with Kalitas is I don't really want to expose my haunted dead while he's alive. I want to wait for a lava axe. Same thing with this prized amalgam. Because he can make zombies from that. So I think what I want to do is just keep using call. Or I could use key. If I use key, I get just the wind and not Gissa's bidding. So I think I just want to use call. When do I use call? I can only use it once a turn, so I have to do it once now. So we'll show him these zombies now. I'm not going to try to ambush Kalitas. I'm going to try to hold out for a lightning axe, and hopefully he doesn't, in the meantime, sack zombies to it. We know he's drawing a neonate, but we don't know that he's going to play it. Or maybe I'm supposed to bounce Kalitas. Nah. Well, if, he's, if he sacks zombies to it, I have to, or else I can't lightning axe it. So straight, so awkward. I also thought about a Westvale Abbey in this deck. The mana was, it's three colors, and you do want multiple reds, multiple blues, because you need to have these chains of ridiculous spells I'm going to bounce the Kalitas. It's the most expensive tree play. Takes his whole turn. Where am I? No. Uh, and it has lifelink. Whereas if I'm chumping, yeah, it has lifelink. So. Uh, thought about the key into the bidding. Really wanted to get the Just the Wind happening. Because the sooner I start using Just the Wind and hopefully chaining other removal-ish type spells. Sooner we can slow him down, get back in the game, stop his momentum. It's it's a little telling that he got back an insolent neonate, that he doesn't have other creatures, but then what does he have in his hand? More masquerades? Oh, he's got that. That's annoying. That's really good. This guy's still in fiery temper range. That's another reason to cast Just the Wind on Kalitas. And now that he did something else with his mana... Now that he did something else with his mana, he can't play Kalitas again this turn. But we're good. We're good. We're okay. We're fine. It's Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Mmm, land. Yay. Ah, uh, da 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 Tempting to get these boys back, but I know Kalitas will just ruin them. And Key will draw me cards, so I guess that's where I go now. I do have to start attacking sometime, but not right now. Too, too, too harrowing. All he has to do is remove my creatures to hit me for six. Oh, I've definitely faced some very mad Avacyn's judgments in my time. Maybe it's not something the hawk has witnessed. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. Ouch. Back to back. How about that? So that puts me in a tough spot because I really did want to use Key to the City and start drawing some cards. And perhaps I still need to. Hmm. So I could chump, 
But then I'm just kind of in that same lock. No, I need to draw cards now, not later. So I have to take this hit. Otherwise, I'll just always have one card in hand and be struggling to draw uh, up to using my creatures, getting my creatures out of the graveyard for the rest of the game. So I have to take that bump, and we gotta do this now. Avison's Judgment, not one you see that often, especially back to back, but here in this game, certainly giving me a beat down. That's not good. <laughs> My god. Oh, this deck hates me today. Like, really hates me. So, what am I doing? I guess I get hit in the air. All the removal is buried in the bottom half of the deck. Hmm. Yeah, it's Haunted Dead or it's Call. Haunted Dead can jump in the way, but then I lose the token. So I think it's Call. Either way, I'm dead to like a removal spell, an instant speed burn spell, a fiery temper. There's nothing I can do about that. Uh. Sweet. Don't know Kalitas. <laughs> He's just gonna hold that now for the rest of the game. Our opponent, super conservative. Um. Those masquerades are actually very annoying. The um, first strike has kept us from gaining life from our Call of the Bloodline the whole game. And Avacyn's Judgment, of course, is just kind of perfect in, in a tragic way. A truly tragic way for us. But we can still figure out a way to draw into Axe and some other stuff. They're still in the deck. All the Lava Axes are still in the deck. All the Fiery Tempers are still in the deck. Just the frickin' wind. Keeps us alive, in theory. <laughs> um, what's best here? I guess now it's time, right? It's time to pull back the haunted dead. Just the wind. One of his guys. Chump block the other. And then I have my dorks on the battlefield. Then he plays Kalitas. Then I untap, and I have to find a way to kill Kalitas. Or we can just run the Call the Bloodline line and draw two cards next turn and keep trying to find ways to kill Kalitas. We don't draw two cards next turn if we don't, and we're just left with... Like, we really can't get these exiled. If these get exiled, we have no way to win the game. <laughs> ah! So hard. But I think we do the Call line. The call key, as we've been doing. We know one of his cards is Kalitas. We know that his cards aren't instant speed removal spells. Weirdly enough. Or else we'd just be dead already. Here he comes. So which one do we bounce? We bounce the one that naturally costs three. Because he can't replay it this turn. He could replay the other one. Oh wait, but then I can't block. I have to block. I have to bounce the flyer. I kept on thinking I was getting the spirit token. I wonder if that's a mistake. If that was a reason to bring back the boys instead that I didn't consider. He's probably like, just frickin' die. That's the other thing about this deck. It, win or lose, it seems to take about 40 minutes.
Congratulations, you get unblockable. Uh, now what do we need? Fiery Temper. Fiery Temper and Lava Axe. Uh, well, actually, Axe wouldn't be very good, right? Because how would we cast it? We need Temper and Axe. Or Temper and... Or uh, Axe and just the Wind together. Uh, okay, well, that gives me a way to cast it. But... That only hits for three. <laughs> Am I still not dead? <laughs> um, uh, discard. Oh, yeah, then I have no blockers. Hoop. Hoop. And just make two blockers. <laughs> That's... God, that sucks. Giving up my fevered visions. I really needed this. Oh. God. Ah. Jeez, oh, Pete's. Oh, I guess you have to do the thing that keeps you alive, don't you? The worst. It's just the worst. It's like some cards I was waiting for all game, but I didn't leave myself options. I think it was a mistake last uh, turn. Okay, what we got? We're bidding? Oh, we're putting out the twins? <laughs> Bring on the damn twins. So, what's he can, what can he do? But now we're pretty much dead. Like, I don't think there's anything we can draw off the top to fix it. Y you have to be able to keep two cards rolling at almost all times with this deck, or it doesn't work. So it was definitely a mistake last turn, too. I should have gotten back the Haunted Dead in the army, despite the Kalitas, and I should have uh, bounced this thing and blocked the flyer with the spirit. Then I'd have another turn, and I could have played the Visions, and who knows? So, big mistake. Big mistake. It only takes one with this godforsaken deck. Well, that was fun, but you can kind of see how that works or doesn't work. <laughs> I definitely have some cards in there, though, that, like, that, that Kozlex Return has to come out. Has to come out. It's a very fun deck, though. If you like puzzles, that deck's a puzzle. Eh, you didn't do anything. I just discarded you ASAP, and I'd probably do it again. So what do I need? So, let's see. Yeah, tap zombies suck. Um, Fighting rain. All creatures get minus two, minus two for <gasps> madness? It's on. It's on. We needed more madness effects, and I was thinking how we needed a sweeper and more removal. It's on. <laughs> We're doing it. Uh, can I play one more? You guys want to see this? You want to see some biting rain? I bet none of you have ever played with biting rain. I bet, I bet not a single one of you have ever put biting rain in a deck. Raise your hand if you've run biting rain. Seriously. <gasps> I don't see any hands. I don't see any hands raised in the class. Science has gone too far. <laughs> uh, out with the brain, in with the rain, baby. Out with the brain and in with the rain. <laughs> I just, oh God, please give me a one biting rate blowout. That's all I ask. I will. I, I don't even care if I lose. I mean, I almost want to keep this because it's there. Um, <laughs> here we go. Yay, cathartic. Life is grand. Oh, 
We have an axe right away. That's always, that's comforting. It's like a security blanket. If the opponent goes turn two, five, five of some kind. <laughs> I've also tried this deck with gear per orrery because it's really good with Call of, Floodline, Call of the Bloodline and Fevered Visions. You can discard the card you draw in your end step, but your opponent rarely can. So you almost always get the benefit and your opponent does not get the benefit of the orrery. The problem with the orrery in this deck, I milled myself all the time. I'd run out of cards before I could kill him. This deck takes a long time to kill. Like a stupid long time to kill. Guess I should have evolving wilds there. I was thinking about reunioning, but there's nothing I want to discard. I want to set up a mad reunion. So I'm not kidding. Every time I had oh god, oh god, it'd be a horror. Uh, the problem with Midnight Oil in the deck, Nighthawk, is you lose a life every time you discard a card, and that includes when you discard them to use with Madness. It's a very sad, sad situation. <laughs> it's very, very sad to pay one life every time you Madness something. No, no bueno. Okay, so this is bad, right? I mean, ingest? He only has to ingest a few cards in a very lucky fashion, and we can't really win. So this is going to get entertaining. Nighthawk says it's basically Necropotence. Almost. You end up discarding... See, you draw one extra card because of it, but you end up discarding almost every card you draw, like, normally. So you draw two cards a turn. One of them is because of Midnight Oil. The other, you would have drawn anyway. And then you discard both of them for some effect. So you lose two life. So you start paying a life for every card you draw. Basically Necropotence, except no turning it off. There's no stop to that pain train. You pretty much run yourself straight to zero. How do I know all this? It's not in-depth on the spot analysis. I put midnight oil in here the first time I built it. I'm, I'm a sh I, God, that's hard to admit, but, but there it is. It's out there now. I said it. I said it. I thought it would be cool. I was right there with you, Nighthawk. I thought it would be cool, and look what happened to me. Look what happened to me. Oh my. Oh my. Oh yeah. Just like that. <laughs> Perfect. Blue-white mist intruders for the win. Where's my biting rain? That was the moment right there, but now I have these tutus on the battlefield. Awkward. <laughs> Okay. Well, I don't have a mad reunion yet, but I have key, so every madness card I draw is replaces itself. So I can reunion now, but what would I do? I could discard the lands and play the Call of the Bloodline. That's probably fine. Let's start with an attack and see if our opponent has anything they want to do. Well, I can make more zombies. That's probably not a bad move. Probably a good move. Let's get wide. We'll draw the biting rain right as I have my zombie horde. Hello, Jace. One thing that 
is good about the deck is that instant speed like armies of stuff are really good against planeswalkers. Hmm. I thought the opponent might minus there. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna hang back to block. Unfortunately, Bulk in turn can only block creatures with flying. Prepare for the bug threat on Reddit. <laughs> the ingest planeswalker deck. Get your game face on for this one. <laughs> Let's just say I got my club ready. Let's just put it that way, but it's probably good because I'm not playing the most uh, serious of my decks. Oh, come on, man. Yeah, I'll just take what they gave me in the first place. <laughs> you go there, you go there, you go there, you can go there. How you doing? He's probably like, yes, he misattacked. Yeah. Um. Do do. Let's see. Two mana brings you back, and discard two cards. What would I discard though? I'd rather draw more cards first. This hasn't been a call the bloodline game yet, but it can turn into one on almost a moment's notice. So I could to key to the. I could. Discard this key of the city and bring it back and have more creatures sooner. Or I could play the card advantage game. Because if I discard this to key, then I have to discard two cards. And I'd have to discard one of these. And I like these. So I'm not going to. I'm just going to get deeper in the deck. I don't think I need to be in a rush. Hello! It's just the rain. Do I need this land? Yeah, we can play this land. Then we can probably discard Biting Rain because we're not going to cast it this game. Boo! Showed up in the wrong order with my Gissa's biddings. It's like they're not a combo. And then we can draw an extra card. Our opponent's going to dig into their deck box and tell some time. Every player gets to tell time. As long as you, you know, complete the quests. So, I've listened to podcasts. I listen to a lot of magic podcasts, and I watch a lot of magic, like, YouTube personalities and YouTube talk shows, things like that. Every now and then, and pretty much when it happens, my ears just perk the heck up, but here and there, along the way, magic duels get just gets mentioned, you know? It just happens sometimes. When it does, it sounds to me like the people talking about it, like they rip on it as being beginner-only product. I mean, obviously it's intended for beginners, so they're not wrong. But they say the campaign missions were kind of cool. I'm pretty sure that none of them have ever gotten to the part where they've unlocked all the cards and can build decks, go online, and battle against other unlocked card decks. It just, it seems like the people who get to that phase of the Magic Duels world will call it level, you know, we'll call it like tier one magic duels it seems like that is a really tiny percentage of people that play the game which you know that's that's kind of frustrating I'd, I'd like more people up here with us I want I want more people coming and watching channels like this and go into forums and things of that nature I'd like more people to care about how the game plays out at this level. Uh, I listened to a podcast yesterday, and it's by pro players, so it's by some really good players. And they were talking about this idea of what if you could only have one Mythic Rare in your deck. And they were speculating, they were going back and forth and talking about how this would change magic, right? How, how, how this would like change everything about uh, whether or not cards like Gideon and Emrakul are... O 
overpowered. And they were just going on and on about all the different, well, there would be this and there would be that, but then would it be skill anymore? It would be even luckier and all this other stuff. And I'm like, I, I could really comment on this situation. I have a lot of experience in a world where there is only one of each mythic. So, just one of those moments. Alright, what are we doing? It's definitely time to regurgitate the horde. If I were taking this as a serious game, I would want to do it slowly and carefully. I would always want to take my time. So, that's what we'll do. Uh, people rag on the rarity restrictions, but I'm glad I don't have to run four Gideons in every white deck. It does add diversity. You do play with some cards that... <clears throat> <laughs> that you may not play like if i were able to run a uh, four origins jace i would probably not run either of these but that's the way it, that's kind of the way it goes um and i don't think it sucked skill out of the meta i you know season in and season out of the of this duels experience i've seen the good the the players who you know are, are genuinely genuinely talented at duels like rising to the top over and over again with a few exceptions but just because there's only one of each mythic and one uh, two of each rare it does it might price you out of some games but it doesn't keep good players from being good players and i think that's the real important thing is like you can have a bad string of luck whether it's four ofs in your deck or not um Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready with my bite and rain. That's never gonna happen. All right, so he pumps. So I've got him all in. He's at 10, so we can go. Kill that. No blocks. Not that it mattered. Let's bring out the army. Show them how we do. Also, when people talk about magical digital next or future digital magic products to compete with Hearthstone, they talk about duels definitely like it is the bastard stepchild of magic. And it certainly was. I do think that this rules engine is still missing some critical things. I'm not saying it doesn't. Uh, lack of upkeep, lack of a second main phase without something from the opponent. But the thing is, we can deal with all of that. Those things don't keep Elder Deep Fiend from being a very good card. And those things don't keep triggered reactions like Haunted Dead and Prize Amalgam from happening if you know when you have to do it. So I actually think that this is pretty close to magic, a lot closer than a lot of people give it credit for. They're scared of Magic Online turning into magic duels in the next phase of magic digital next or whatever but i don't think that's such a bad place to be this to me feels like you know 80 ish percent of the magic experience for less than 20 percent of the cost and time investment of 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 uh, magic online and magic the gathering and i think that is a great ratio i just i wish we could get some I wish we could just get some uh, big personalities and some marketing dollars and just get the get more of the community, more of the team behind it. That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> There's bugs in Magic Online too, and the bugs in Duels have gotten a lot better than they were. The like the. The bugs here are not as bad as they used to be, and I think they're probably a little bit of TLC away from being perfect. All right. If you want to upkeep, just play an Oath of Jace. Yeah, and then find a way to play an Oath of Jace on your opponent's side of the board. Let's just uh, let's just write a patch where everybody starts the game with an Oath of Jace in play that never scries. All right. But I mean. Just the presence of that alone, that lets us know that it's possible. Like, it's there. It is there. They just haven't uh, distributed it.
This is the fun part where I think about every single freaking card in my deck and what land to fetch with Evolving Wilds. <laughs> when you play four colors, this is, and a lot of your cards are double colored, this is a, um, a tedious process. But the Caravan at least makes a good amount of that easier. All right, our opponent's showing us maybe some vehicular strategy. Grabbing the black, because I might draw Liliana. The goat says, I wish some of the cards in the story mode were playable. Oh, don't we all? I mean, that's been, that's been the story since the beginning. I always hated that they would put cards in story mode or in AI decks that we aren't allowed to use. Oh, the frustration. Um, bum, bum. Implement Apprentice. Weird. But not something I want to push. So, but I think I'll still drop the caravan, because you never know. Might throw an aura on it or put out something I do want to push. I've been uh, running into a lot of, like, I've been running deep vehicles a good amount online. Just trying to optimize that build. And I've run into a lot of people who will fatal push. Or, um, yeah, Fatal Push. My Turn 1 Exemplar or my Turn 1 Apprentice. And I'm like, man, I hope that means you have a handful of removal. Because what you really want a Fatal Push or what is uh, a Smuggler's Copter or a Heart of Kirin, you know? Or you want to revolt it and push a Thalia. And it seems like, uh, okay, our opponent's on plan go wide. And now we know that they don't have a Thopter. Or I am, um, I'm sorry. They don't have a Thalia, and they don't have a Heart of Kirin, and they don't have a Smuggler's Copter, so now am I supposed to push that thing? I have the open mana. I don't really want to block it next turn. Not at all. Save myself the life. I don't know, push is such a good removal spell. I think I just want to hold it. Maybe I'll end up wiping his field with Chandra in two turns. Oh, hi. Um... I can do this and leave a push up. I can. Or I can do it and then play Oath of Gideon. That's really backwards. Or I can play Oath now and play this next turn. I can't play this and an Oath of Gideon because one of my lands is red-white. So I can play this with push open. Okay. And what do I do? I plus it. Plus, plus, plus. So bass backwards though. It's like if I play the Oath now, he comes down stronger. And then I can't play this one. So I think I'm going to play the Oath in case I draw a land to play that. And if not, I have an awesome play next turn either way. Either way, we get some Chandra. And in the meantime, we've got some tokens. There is a card that might need to get pushed. That thing can deal damage directly to the Planeswalkers when he plays artifacts. And that is annoying. Uh, taking the damage. I want to keep my tokens around to defend my walker. So, either I'll draw the land so I can Chandra, or I won't. So I don't need to push right there either. Okay, that's good. Ish. Now I can do this. I'll have a lot of blockers. It's unlikely. Yeah, he can't play that many artifacts. He can implement it. He can probably maybe play two artifacts, get Chandra down to two loyalty. But we're going to take out his token and get a zombie. Going off. Now sacrament. No, he can't sacrifice the red implement, can he? No, he cannot. So he'll have to do that on his turn.
<laughs> Planeswalker tokens. Ta-ta. Uh-oh, here we go. Looks like you might be uh, called in for action. That is not what I expected to happen. Don't know why, but it really didn't occur to me. Wow, nicely done. So I'm going to need that land. I'm going to need that land. I don't know if I've ever been more jealous of my opponent's turn. Brutals. Brutals is my opponent's name. This is brutal indeed. I love it. Is everybody going for Chandra? Everybody is. I can take out some of his three toughness guys. Weird. I would think that would be for sure. Okay. Well, I'm taking out his Fire Weaver. I guess it doesn't matter what else I do, so I will block over here. See, let's see. One, two, okay. That's in case I don't draw the land off the top. All right, hit me, dealer. Uh, not exactly. Okay. Good news is we still have a lot of life to play with. Chandra soaked up a lot of damage. And we've got a deck full of lands and planeswalkers, so there isn't much else we'll draw. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. There are, of course, two other six drops. Three other six drops I could draw? Oh, nice. Makes me wish I had my push mana up. Epic fail, Dan. Epic fail. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go to five. Not appealing. Go to seven. Also not that appealing. Hmm. See, he goes to five. He still has the implement. Or if I go to five. Well, we also have to plan that we might top deck the land, so we should block in a way to save life, I guess. Or we could double block one of his tokens. Then what's he left with? If we double block a token, we go to nine. I can kill his chief if I can trigger revolt. I don't know if I can. But if I can, then he's only, I'm at nine and he can deal four damage and I'm on two turn clock instead of a three. It's a tough choice. I'll just go this way. Uh, it would re like to get that right. I'd have to like do the mental math on how many ways I have in my deck to trigger revolt, and I don't have the time for that. I should have paused it before blocks and considered, and that would have thrown the math off anyway. But he put it all on the battlefield. How about an untapped land? Bingo. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Yay for math. <laughs> I like my opponent's deck. It's a interesting little red white uh it's an interesting red white artifact take that you don't see every day. Instead of vehicles, it's just very much like tokens and artifacts. But oops. <laughs> it looks like he ran out of gas. Yeah, that's how you do it, guys. <laughs> Just draw what you need when you need it. Like that. That That's also just stupid. <laughs> stupid nut, just nut draw. <laughs> and I could power up the caravan, but I want to leave Fatal Push up. 
Just cause. Makes me feel better. Brutal indeed, my friend. You had a heck of a turn, but it didn't quite get you there. And that's the biggest problem with Saram's expertise. It sets up these amazing, beautiful turns. Which makes it hard not to play it in a whole bunch of decks, as we'll see later if we get into those. But man oh man. The problem with your Saram's expertise turn is when the opponent untaps and has a bigger turn with something else, like a big Chandra. It's just a very ouchy wah. It's a feels bad. But our opponent should be proud. I like their deck. I like what they were doing. Almost got there. Almost got there. We had to get lucky. Not like he had a particularly nut draw, either. It was just a good draw. Mostly featuring commons and uncommons, with the big hit being Sram's expertise. Toolcraft could have been anything, it didn't really have an effect on the game. So, if, uh, if either you're on a budget or want to try, like, a a pauper type strategy, or if you just want to try a different strategy. Like, I don't know how many rares and mythics are in his deck, but... Looks like there's a lot you can do. Going, uh... Inventor's Apprentice into Fireweaver and to Thopter Engineer with some implements and some Chief of the Foundry. And if you have a Saram's Expertise, hell yeah. Now my opponent's running the timer. Um, we know the game's over, though. Let's see. Where's he at? He's at 39. He shouldn't... Yeah, but whatever. There's no reason to sit here and wait for him. And uh, let's go do the next thing. You're mad because I'm encouraging running the timer? I don't care, it's my time. Like, he's running my time, I can leave if I want to. And, uh, you know, you guys run into that, you can leave too. Uh, yeah, I guess. I don't really like this card being here for Lance Sucks, but this is so good on the play, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the 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 whole uh, so, uh, apples, uh, apples, Appleson is uh, giving me the uh, good old like uh, how to discipline your children argument, you know. Uh, so now he'll always run the timer and hopes opponent will concede. Okay, I can block him. He does that again. Other people can report him. Other people can leave and get their gold elsewhere. It's just a game. If that's how he, if that, if that's how he's gonna handle it, he's just a douchebag, and he gets to live with that. But I don't have to live with that. <clears throat> Odds are he'll move on to a different game. Most people, most people with that kind of mentality don't last too long. With games that are hard or have a lot of luck in them. And it's quite possible he just put the controller down and left the room and thought the timer would run and. It, the timer was being held uh, by his rogue's passage, which he played that turn. So maybe he didn't consider that. It's quite possible he just like put the controller down, went to get food, went to go to the bathroom. It's not always uh, it's not always hateful. So a pair of spirits from my opponent, pretty bad for us. That is not what we want to really battle with. Okay, so what are we going to do? We could Gideon Emblem, which makes our creatures better than his spirits, but you can still trade for one of them, and then our whole board, we're tapped out, and we have one flyer, and he has nothing. That's nothing, that, that's nothing to get excited about. 
Um, this can only block creatures with flying. Hmm. I wonder if I'm supposed to attack. Play, he's going to double block. And I'm going to play Gideon. Or it, maybe I'm supposed to leave them back. Play Gideon. Make a knight. My opponent attacks Gideon. Gideon takes it. Then I start plussing Gideon and attacking with all. Because he it gets him to attack with his flyers. Yeah. That's the way to do it. And if he just sits back, we'll just plus Gideon and beat him up. We'll just go thug life with Gideon. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> I usually go to the bathroom or make a sandwich when an opponent is running the timer. Yeah, okay, so... If all I wanted to do was get into another game of Magic, learn more about my decks, and have fun and play more Magic, i definitely just leave when my opponent starts running the timer in obvious situations. There isn't a lot of point to me staying. If I want to go to the bathroom or if I want to go let my dog outside, or if I want to go make a snack, I will definitely let my opponent run the timer while I do these things. And if I'm streaming, I will definitely not watch my opponent run the timer because of the viewers. So that all makes sense. The world is full of, you know, we, we, we tend to talk in always and nevers, but the world is full of situations where always and nevers are not right. Okay, so our opponent didn't attack. They're going to hold back the spirits. They have a blob. Do I care about that blob? They don't have delirium. I can pretty much keep them from getting it with a spell shrivel. And in one more turn, I have a gear hulk. So my line is going to be shrivel what they play, then gear hulk the shrivel on the next thing they play. So in the meantime, what am I doing? If I make one more 2-2, I have good blocks against his 3-3. Three, three. So I think that's the line before Gideon starts attacking. You're right, Arrogant Rabbit. We are sitting across from a pretty interesting green-white delirium deck. So still, uh, you know, I was impressed by the last artifact uh, Boros deck we just played against. And now we're playing against an Abzan-ish delirium deck. So plenty you can still do with this format. Uh, I don't think Ooze is terrible. You guys think Ooze is terrible? I mean, I don't think it's great, but I wouldn't call it terrible. Do I want to... Do I really want to shrivel that? I mean, it's going to get him Delirium eventually, but by then, I've got my blockers. I think I'll wait and see if he has something else. Hopefully that pause made him think I'm just reading. This is just such a, a bad card that I don't care. Uh, but if you're wondering what it does, okay, what are you, okay, now I really don't know what's going on. So, uh, he, it's a delirium. It's a 2-2 two -two flyer for two if he has delirium. I guess that's not a bad thing to counter here. And exile. He doesn't have any creatures in his graveyard. Um, but the sigil is gonna mill the top card of his library every turn, and once he gets delirium, he can sacrifice it to get back, a, a creature and a land? One target land, and one target creature. Okay. Uh, yep. The opponent, uh, Goblin King here, is slow rolling. Uh, Sigile. I'm not gonna say what that sounds like, but... Uh, try to remember it as Sigile. Not Sigel. <laughs> you know what word is the hardest in that for me is Delirium. All right, I spell delirium wrong almost every time. You know why? Because it's I-R-I-U-M. And I want to say delirium. So I want to put an E after that R. So I have to remember it as delirium. 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 <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, or I think that's funny. You tell me, guys. Am I funny? Is that funny? Let's get in there, Gideon. <laughs> Now that we have a pair of 2-2s two to block his ooze and make his ooze attack bad, as well as this card, it's time for Gideon to start making his creatures do things. Top card is another land, so that does not help his delirium count.
Uh, and Goblin King's had enough, but I'm going to play it out. I want to see more of his deck. I want to finish this game. Um, but yeah, this is our blue-white flash. It's still mostly a spirit deck, but obviously not everything is spirit-related. So that will not have Delirium. If it did, this would be a problem. But since it doesn't, that's fine. He seems to have a low curve because he has lots of plays every turn. These crumbling vestiges are really... They're a touch unnerving. There's a declaration in stone. That we don't want to happen. But that does give him a sorcery, so now he... If I put a creature in his yard, he gets delir delirium. <laughs> It's funny. It's funny saying that out loud. I've never said that to a group before. So if I'm giggling at myself like a child. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I don't really want to block, do I? That's a good attack. It takes me off the emblem for free. That's one of the better attacks I've ever seen the AI make. <laughs> because... It would be tempting there to attack with everything or nothing, but that's got to be the right attack. If Gideon takes it, I can't get a free emblem and keep my Gideon. If I block it, I make a trade I don't like. So, yeah, that's a good attack. And likely what he should have done uh, the last two turns is attack with one spirit, hold back the other. I'd wait. Wow, look at the curve. Got so many cheap... So now I'm really glad I didn't take try to take a trade, because then I'd have no flying presence to defend Gideon. But my god. This is this deck has an awesomely low curve, right? It's like all ch super cheap spells that meet the delirium requirement. Uh Yeah, I think I just pick at his board some more. Your Hulk, are you going in? They're not there yet. So yeah, well, we'll pressure with the fatties. Oops, nope. So. Let's see, of all the things to do with an unsubstantiate... It's tempting, because one line you can take right now is I can bounce my Gideon, replay it, and make another knight. But, I think I can do better. <laughs> I think I can do better. It's another land. My opponent has uh, a fondness for Crumbling Vestige and Warp Landscape, so I think there's some Eldrazi cards in here. Maybe some, uh, what are, what are some good Delirium ones? I mean, maybe there's the generically powerful Thought Seers and uh, Reality Smashers, but maybe there's more. Maybe there's more stuff going on. Nice. All right, now we get that free, that sweet free emblem. Uh, Grasp of Darkness, what are you targeting? A token. Fine. My opponent's at eight. So let's go force some bad blocks. He has to block the Gear Hulk. He doesn't have to block the other two, but then he's just about dead. Alright, that's good. Our opponent will get Delirium when their creature hits the yard, so they'll be able to use their Sigil, but Unsubstantiate can hold that off. Extractor of Sin. Delirium at the beginning of your upkeep, if there are four more, transform it. I guess you have to put in... I need to see the other side now. You have to figure out the name of the other side to put into the card thing. How awkward. I don't know what the other side does. Is it actually good? Does it do anything? <laughs> mm-hmm. You get a news. Yeah, Gideon can die. It's fine. 
Extractor of Flesh. 3-5. Eldrazi control our vigilant. Sacrifice a non-Eldrazi creature. Create a 3-2 colorless horror token. It's the second one of those I've spell shriveled. Feels weird. <laughs> but man, that curve. Like, I love how cheap his whole deck is. It, it gets to... It, it, like, makes so many plays a turn when it curves out. It's, it's, it's kind of unnerving. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that's even that good for... Like, okay, so if you have Delirium, you play, you pay three mana, you have to sacrifice something, you get a 3-2, and you get a 3-5 that can sacrifice things to make 3-2s. I mean, and they all have Vigilance. I guess that's... That's all kind of okay on rate, and none of it is yet impressing me. I don't know what's up. Uh, if you want to see... Eh, you guys might want to see the Spirit deck. I really like this... This flashy Spirit deck. I, of course, played one... A spirit deck two seasons ago. I think it was Shadows out over Innistrad season, and did very well in the tournament with it. Got all the way to the finals without losing a match before dropping the finals. But this is what I'm rocking right now. If you like copying my decks and taking them for a spin, I know, I know all you net deckers out there. Rolling right along. Let's spam some thopters. Oh, I'm gonna sprint for a, a drink. Got a game. Got a hustle. Ugh. Up the stairs. Down the stairs. Wife has things to say to me. Oh, I'm so tired. Mobius question mark? Oh, the because of the uh, face. Nah, turns out it is not. Tragedy. When the villain's gonna get on the tragedy. It's fine with Peter the Rocket Creeper. My BG's voice. I don't know if some of you kids know what that means. Ooh, choices. Tough choices. Okay, so copter this turn, loot next turn. Of course, playing red, so could harness lightning. Or we can apprentice this turn and another tap land. Next turn, we can copter engineer. And then the turn after that. Copter can have haste, and if we have another land, Scrounger could come out with it. I really want to try that, as that is a little different from the play pattern I've been doing on every artifact deck for, like, this whole season. <clears throat> Red Knot. Look out. I saw one of these get aerial modified on the GP stream earlier today. Oh, the glory. <laughs> oh, the glory. And there's the land, so this draw is rolling just the way we wanted it to. No one man should have all that power. For a more contemporary reference. Dreamhack has an event going this weekend? I didn't even know that. <laughs> Hanzo is streaming something about infinite combo jank. Gosh, there's so much streaming going on, y'all. How am I supposed to watch it when I'm doing it? This is this is frustrating. So much streaming. Uh, of course, magic is between rounds. Basically, we've been watching the screen of like the same replays over and over. It seems like this whole the whole time on the GP. Oh yeah, so my opponent missed their land drop. <laughs> Not good. You don't want that. <laughs> Get you some. What? How you doing? That's the turn four I like. Do 
The only reason to keep this hub... Well, I do have energy cards, and it can get back Scrap Heap Scrounger, but that doesn't make it better than either of these. So, hub away. But, uh, yeah, Thopters against a Masquerade opponent. Brutal is the right word. But these are the Thopter Engineer draws that people enjoy. Siege mod. Oh, look, guys. Combo assembled. Our opponent did it. How'd we do it? We found a way to defeat the Siege Modified modification. <laughs> I find it funny that this finally happened, but it's not going to defeat us. Can't block. I do like talk about dogs. I do like dog flavor. Oh, that sounded really bad. I do like flavor text about dogs, as I am a dog person. <laughs> so that was a brutal Thopter deck. Let's have a let's have a look at this monstrosity of a build that is just all about spamming the Thopters. Not much else. Pretty much want to run all the things that make more Thopters. Apprentice and Scrounger and Copter. We got Unsubstantiate and Harness Lightning to not die. Yeah. NG Virtuoso Chief Harvest. Whirler Rogue, Pia Kirin, Maverick Thopterist, Skyship. Boom! Here's my Thopters. Deal with it. I don't even have room for Spy Network. You know why? It doesn't make enough Thopters doesn't make any thopters right away everything that like makes a thopter right away that's even a reasonable card made the deck <laughs> and then uh, we we curve out and smash maybe we Westvale Abbey who knows just yeah deal with that how many sweepers do you have because I've got like eight three for ones <laughs> I just went into the deck. This is what we're playing next. It's basically vehicles, but with the token-y, go wide -y type theme. So hopefully we'll have some epic SRAMs at expertise moments. Probably nothing that you need to see, but it's next on the list. Uh, do I have a towerish deck anywhere? Yeah, it's near the front. I don't know if we'll get to it, but it's my blue-red deck. I know you've seen me play that before. That's, in my opinion, that is what tower is and should always be. That's the way a tower is meant to be. Um, so all my regulars can know, I'm going to be playing my match today at four o'clock my time. That's about two hours and 20 minutes from now. I'm going to be playing my top eight match for vehicular supremacy. Again, DCG, I believe is the name. So CGB, DCG, two names that are very easy Gotta like that. All right. Well, this sucks. It's kind of like, I mean, it doesn't suck. I'm gonna keep it, but it's like, do you play the turn one apprentice or don't you? I don't think you do. Not in this case. I think better to have a two drop on curve on the play than a one drop with no follow up. A one two is not the most impressive thing you'll ever see in your life. Let's find some land. Land, 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 please. Those aren't lands. To the bottom. Sucks. Both cards I really would have liked in most situations. 
situation, most situations. We're gonna get my words out. Hello, Captain. Am I supposed to run my motorist into you? <laughs> I guess so. Uh, what else can we do here? Trinketer doesn't do nothing, but might be the play. No, Scrounger. Scrounger and Prentice are the play. We don't have any vehicles, so the motorist isn't actively doing too much. So just go get, go get wrecked. Trade happens. Put out five power on turn three, that's not bad. That's good stuff. Always watching with no creatures. Never a good sign. Never where you want to be. Off the top. Scrounger again. Ooh. So I could throw down the Trinketer, but it's not going to pump anything. Or I could throw down Scrounger. I guess they're about the same. And Trinketer is more mana efficient. Trinketer makes a better surprise, but since there's nothing to surprise with at this moment, not going to do too much. Let's get you out there. Let's go wide. The always watching is a sign that my opponent's probably not going to sweep me anytime soon. And even if they do, I see blue and white. Planar outburst. That would be another turn away. A turn during which we could apply a massive beating. Oh, look at this. Here we go. That's going to be a 2-2. Two -two. That's a pain in the butt. 2-2 two -two and a 3-4. Pretty hard to attack through. But I think we're going to have to unlicense this thing. Could also just throw down the harvester. So if we think that this game is going to go fast, that we can maintain and win this fast game, then we want to unlicense here. If we think this game is going to grind to a halt no matter what we do, we want to play the Harvester. I'm not convinced that we can't still win a fast game, so I will make the play for the fast game. Hmm, do I trade the Trinketer for the damage? I'm gonna have to trade with this sometime, right? Not like I'm gonna use the Trinketer anytime soon. Oh, that didn't just happen, did it? <sighs> Skipped my attack phase. Did not mean to. Uh, punt, punt that. Somebody, somebody... Uh, Declare that a punt. And uh, there is Thalia and a smuggler's copter. So now the game, unfortunately, uh, the game now is going to grind out. And I very much didn't want that to happen. That was not part of the line I was going for. But uh, Caravan gives us more long-term options, but the Harvester shuts down any aerial assault my opponent could start. 0.64 punts per hour. I think we're doing okay. <laughs> Just blame bugs? No, I can't blame a bug for that. That's on me. I bumped I bumped the wrong button, baby. Certainly wasn't what I meant to do, but it happened. So my opponent's playing vehicular spirits. They have a Westvale Abbey. We have to keep an eye on that. They only need one more creature because of the smuggler's copter to make that happen. I need one more land for Ballista to keep him off that. Or I need to force some blocks. He could double block me. Oof. He double blocks my Harvester and I only kill one of those things. That's not good. Do I have to do that? One could argue that I have to do that. But he can't play... I guess he could go land, Toppelgeist, West Veil vale Flip. That doesn't seem very likely. I really don't want to walk into a double block, not with the Harvester. Not when it's so good on defense. So we'll play the Caravan. 
And hopefully next turn, Ballista can keep him off Abby. He doesn't seem to have a creature heavy draw. He had that turn three always watching with nothing else. Jace. Jace, Jace, Jace. Okay. So he's going to start plussing Jace. Boom. Bouncing any of my stuff isn't that impressive. Okay. Well, now we have to attack him or Jace. Okay. Frickin' Thalia. Okay, he wants to square off. He wants to trade. Oh, it's a 4-4. I forgot about always watching. Hmm. I could use my ballista though still. Hard to remember all this stuff. Um, That's going to come in tapped. This comes in tapped. Could also swing with this. Play Heart of Kirin. Or other Scrounger. Be vulnerable to a pretty big counterattack. Is that right? You can double block here, I can eat a spirit, and then five points gets to him. that or nothing? I don't like nothing. And again, he's got the Abbey. So he has two forms of like painful inevitability with Jace and uh, Westvale Abbey. I don't like trading the Harvester here for a Haunter, but I think it had to be. Could have also killed Jace with Ballista, but I don't like that. But that attack is probably going to cost me the game, because I could just be ignoring Jace and going to the dome right now if, if my opponent were uh, six life points lower. Also can't help but notice that I haven't drawn any of the token cards. Like, um, I know I put a Engineer on the bottom, but I haven't drawn Saram's Expertise or any of the other go widey cards which is kind of annoying as that was like the difference in the deck <laughs> the only real one all right now what do we do i think we just keep the vehicles going he's got the first strike that is a major problem so i can't get in on the ground anymore so it's got to be in the air this will be a 4-4 if he blocks with the copter it's a trade I put this out first. Has a sound gone for anyone else? Sound gone. Not for me. Unless I just fixed it with like touching my mic oddly. Um hmm. Frickin' Thalia. Alright. So, we'll see what he does. Hmm. 
mean, he's got the five critters. Okay, so he definitely wants that dead. So now I have a choice. And I think what I'm going to do is trade for his creatures to keep him off Westvale Abbey. Let him keep his copter, unfortunately, but I'm not I'm less worried about that. And then I'm gonna use Walking Ballista to kill Jace. So then he has a copter, two creatures. Which is kind of it's kind of interesting little dance we just did. And hopefully, like, he has to tap his creatures to crew his copter, so. At least takes him down some blockers. Well, there's another flyer. I might, if I lose this game because I uh, gave up my air position, that's on me. He does have really solid ground. With the first strikers. <laughs> okay. Like that, y'all. This is a Kithion's Tactics deck. Jeez. Alright. Six plus six, twelve, five, seventeen. Leaves me dead to one attack in the air from the copter. He's also got the three, two. So he's got seven in the air. So if I block Thalia and take 11, I still have one more turn. All right. Yeah, this really fell apart when I missed that attack. So I, I certainly punted this game, probably in multiple ways, but I, I lost all initiative when I gave up that attack step. I could have been trying to find ways to push damage through to win the game. Since I can't, there's almost no way I can pull this off. The problem with needle spires in here is it's just going to die. It doesn't hit for enough. Uh, either of his first strikers will just kill it. What a mess. So what do I need to draw? Angel of Invention? That would be... that would let me live. No, it would come in tap, so I need him to attack with Thalia, and I need to draw Angel of Invention. Yeah, he's not gonna do that. Man, I really wish I could have that turn back to see how this would have played out. I might have lost anyway, but it would have been a very different game, I think. I really wish I could go back in time on that one. Oh well. It's a punk game, unfortunately. He's an, like, he seems like a good player, but for some reason he has this almost taunting way of, like, when he triggers his uh, blockers for vehicles. I don't know if that's on purpose or not. I know I've done that before, but only when I was scared my opponent didn't realize I could block, much like the AI doesn't with your vehicle. It's 
scared of lag. That happens too. I, I that that does happen. Still, it gives away. Like it, you should never really do that if you're gonna play this game because it gives away what you're what you're going to do to the opponent. Hmm. A Slayer's Plate. Weird. Well, we lost to Thalia and we lost to Smuggler's Copter, so I, I can I can certainly respect losing to those cards. There's some weird shit in there, though. <laughs> Alright, so rolling on. I don't even mind seeing a vehicle based deck lose that way, <laughs> because quite frankly, they do really, really well without my help. Um, let's go play the Rakdos deck now. <laughs> and we have a message. Um, I mean, it's keepable-ish. There's a lot of artifacts in our deck that we can draw to make this hand work, so I'll try it. Uh, the, the message was a GG message. that'll be our artifact so definitely not just gonna fire a fatal push on a van on this little guy an envoy i keep on wanting to say vanguard i think it's elite vanguard this is expedition envoy it'd be uh one mana two ones for one okay he's gonna turtle up with his two one for one that seems weird cool We get to five mana and have a Thopter Engineer, dear lord. Yes, Expedition Envoy is Elite Van Vanguard with ally tacked on to as its third freaking creature type. The unofficial motto of every Expedition House is ready for anything, no kidding. A phrase whose significance has been amplified since the emergence of Eldrazi. What? <laughs> um, alright. Got a double striker. I could kill it and get in with all, or I could build out the board further. I think I'll give him a chance to throw an aura on it or do something that manically aggressive. So Elite Vanguard has been in five sets before they decided they could do better and introduced uh, Expedition Envoy. Five sets. Five sets. Now, back in my day, you know who's better than all of these? And I mean by a mile, in terms of just being awesome, not in terms of actual better, because human is an important creature type. That matters. But my uh, pick of the litter haha, is Savannah Lions, because, you know, kitty. The original art for Savannah Lions, which at the time was rare, and all it was is one white for a 2-1 one for one. Oh, that card is great. Freaking love that card. Bang bang. Alright. 
Yeah, look at all that text. <laughs> look at all that text. <laughs> Creature type, cat mofos. Creature type, cat. Nice. Look at all that. Look at all that excellent flavor. See, that was back when somebody wrote that flavor with a careful pen, I tell you. <laughs> Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, and uh, Fourth Edition. Yeah, and that's it. That's all you got for Savannah Lion. The original, baby. And then uh, in 8th and 9th edition, it made a quick return before they realized they could throw the human creature type on it. Yeah, that's it for you, buddy. <laughs> All that talk about Savannah Lions, and here we are just unlicensedly disintegrating a pumped up double striker. Brutality. <laughs> wow. Just feed me all the unlicensed right now. I've got a match later today. Stop feeding me the unlicensed right now. I'm gonna need them later, damn it. <laughs> Ugh. Boom. Yeah, that's our second Kithian tactics we battled in a row. <laughs> oh, Reckless Cohort. That's dark, bro. Dude. Feel for you, man. Just... Oh. Oh. Too much, dude. That sounds like something they would say on Game of Thrones, like when like one of the Ironborn dies. Or when Davos like finally bites the dust. Ugh. Which that's not a spoiler. I don't know that Davos is ever going to bite the dust. I have no idea. That was I haven't read you know, that 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 part's still unwritten, obviously. Nobody knows, except for Martin. And maybe some producers at HBO. So that's not a spoiler. I don't know for sure anything go is going to happen to Davos. So this is my black green deck. Let's go. <laughs> it's it's basically black green mythics. It's a lot of mythic stuff. It doesn't focus specifically on delirium or on snakes or on uh, zombies or on anything uh, energy. It's just. In my opinion, you just take the strongest black and green cards and you throw them at Cauldron. You add, a, you add some chicken bones. Say they're human bones and, you know, the eye of a cat or whatever, and you've got a good little delicious witch brew. Uh, yeah, Gitrog Monster, of course, is going to be hopefully making an appearance as being a genuinely awesome card. <laughs> Just bring out the giant frog whore. And if you want the flavor of the Gitrog monster, there is a whole story written about it on the Magic the Gathering website. There's a whole story about nothing but the Gitrog. I guess we can keep this. We have no removal spells, but we have a Blist and a Sage. If our opponent, though, is going to play, like, the human curve... Human, 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 we just die. Also, we have all tap lands. That's kind of a reason for concern. I don't know, I don't think I can mulligan this hand. Okay. Turn two Smuggler's Copter. I also like the Gitrog story, Nighthawka. That's why I think I remember it so well. It's such a better story. So that one story, that one little like slice of life out of Innistrad about the Gitrog is so much better than the entire Kaladesh and Aether Revolt storyline combined. It's comical to me. Like it, it's, it's hilarious to me. It, ah. I'm t I don't know how they got that in Kaladesh. I couldn't even read it. I gave up. I couldn't read it. I didn't even get that far. 
<laughs> and I read every bit of text from the uh, shadows over in Estrad and um, the moon was the Eldritch moon. I read every single piece of story from that. My opponent's living the hub life. They've got white and blue, a red card in play, and two aethers. Oh! Okay, so they're running an aether hub dot deck. <laughs> Where everything is energy, and energy is everything. Alright, here we are, failing to draw untap land. I really do want to pick that thing off. But taking a turn off is a generally bad way to go. And we can always pay four for the ability later. <laughs> so let's just hope we get to the top end here. As far as delirium count, we're not looking great. We've got a land, and we've got an artifact and a creature, so we need to draw an instant. And we have three murders, three grasp, three fatal push. If I draw any of those, uh, this game will look a lot better. Reflector Mage, awesome. Just throw that into your, you know, four color energy deck. Um, he's preparing to attack. I guess if he makes the token, I'll have something to Rex Sage next turn, so I guess that's fine. Since Rex Sage is my only play next turn as it sits. Come on, make a token. Add a boy. Band card. <laughs> yes, uh, Reflector Mage. Band card. Band card. Indeed. Oh, yay. Nothing like drawing the second one when your first one has been Reflector Maged. This is actually pretty good. I mean, it's trading with two energy and the Rogue Refiner, so it's basically a down-a-card trade, but it's better than nothing by quite a long shot. Ishkana looks awesome here. We need to draw an instant for that Delirium, and there's a lot in the deck. So we're drawing live, but it's been a pretty pretty ugly, sloppy green-black draw so far. That That's not weird. A lot of these draws are sloppy for this type of deck, but... Okay. What the hell? is going on with my opponent. They have no mountains, and they're playing Collective Defiance on my Reclamation stage. <laughs> oh, they wield my hand. What the? I guess he knew he was hitting Sylvan Advocate, but how about that flood, right? It's quality right there. So let's jump in front of our refiner. Let's remove a token, kill this thing. Buy some time. My opponent's deck is off the rails. Wow. Just bring in that land, baby. I mean, it's it's got... The deck has a lot of land. That's not... It's not ridiculous. You have... Look at that. I have three types after that. <laughs> oh, this is great. It doesn't always work out. I've had opponents, like, really make my life beautiful. But in this case, obviously they got me. They got me. So we have a tough choice here. It's also worth noting right now my opponent has no red mana. Does that make my tireless tracker more likely to live? And it, so I'm at 13. If I get a clue now and pop it, my tracker can block the mage. The problem there, if I evolving wilds, I get two clues. Right now my opponent can attack me for five, and in my, if my tracker lives, great. If it doesn't, I have two clues. Uh, two clues are not the same as cards. You have to pay mana to pop them. I'd be at eight. If my opponent attacked me for five again, I wouldn't quite be dead, but I'd be getting there. Hmm. 
So I'm gonna take this road. Maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong. I'll respond to anything my opponent does to get energy by cracking in case he runs shock or something or harnessed so that he can't respond to the clue. How many evolving wilds have I drawn? All of them. <laughs> it's just great. <laughs> Uh, if I had a dime for every time I drew all my evolving wilds. Well, if he has a removal spell, this is the slow roll of slow rolls. We also have a lot of top end. A lot of five and six cost mythics. Two of them are in the graveyard, but there's more. See if he was ready for that. He didn't have another Reflector Mage either. That was something I was very worried about. That's okay. Suddenly I like the... Oh, wow. Dude, he didn't see it. Yeah, he didn't see that play. Ouch. <laughs> Are, you f Are you freaking kidding me right now? Okay. Um... Better, closer, warmer. Resolves. Good. I'm not going to Fatal Push right now. In fact, I'd prefer probably not to push a Rogue Refiner. I'd rather hang on to this. If he wants to keep attacking with the Refiner, I can just... Okay. Well, maybe now is a good reason to. I was going to say I can kind of counter-race that thing. Oh, he's gonna pass. Okay, he doesn't want to race. All right, so this is the part of the game where I'm gonna hang on to my removal spell and try to use it at the last possible minute. This is amazing. Um, four color humans, is it? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, I guess so. Four color humans who make energy. I guess the longer the game goes, the better it is for me. Did we draw all the Foul Orchards yet? Nope. So that's probably our next draw step is going to be Foul Orchard. Gitrog's he Git Gitrog is coming. Be patient. I'm going to leave that Evolving Wilds. Fatal Push on Demand. Eh, not quite a Foul Orchard. Not the same power level. <laughs> Alright, so there's something that might be a, a better push target. <laughs> we'll see. Hi! Where have you been all my life? Um... Mm -hmm. Just based on the way the game's going, I'm really unconvinced that my Nissa is going to live, and I want to make sure I get something out of it. SCG just had a hilarious commander game. Okay. I don't even watch the commander product. Oh, that's what he's holding? Well, that makes me look bad. That looks bad. So he's got to tap something. And he doesn't have the energy to power up his fumarole. Yeah, that makes my choice look pretty bad. Didn't think about that one, but you can't play around everything anymore. 
Well, Rogue Refiner, I guess the time is nigh. I'm going to try blocking and see if I can coax a spell out of him. Oh! See, that's what I'm talking about. This is why you hold instant speed removal spells for the moment. I still lose my Aetherborn. But I keep the Nyssa. And I get the ride down out of the hand. Um... I guess I can get... No, I can't get anything back here. I'm still going to keep the Evolving Wilds around. Alright. That's the draw right there. Um, It's a draw. Do I stand up with the 5-5? Five five, or do I crack him with the 5-5? Five five? I think the 5-5 five five will hang out. Along with my other land. I keep on playing this as though a long game is good for me, and I think that's still true. I think my deck is better than his for a long game. But, whatever. Okay, that will be annoying. It can check the uh, vital force. But, it can't kill it. Okay, cool. Don't really want to trade my Quagmire. Yeah, so the Healy Rye plus Dahlia's Lieutenant. My, my opponent is definitely going format deep here. That's... Stepping right up for the chumps, though. I don't know how much I like that. <sighs> From his spot, anyway. But I guess he's hanging on. I just don't know if you, if he's really going to get very far ahead. I, I would have probably been more in a position of trying to draw into another human and then using the Sahili trick. Um, hmm. Maybe he's just supposed to let Sahili die there. Eh, it's weird. It's a weird spot. Depends what's in his deck, too, which has been baffling to me so far. I mean, I got Collective Defiance off two Aether Hubs. Though, to be fair, that trade might have been fine for me, because my opponent's been stuck on... Uh, stuck without red mana ever since. You can't turn that funeral on, fumarole on. Let's see. I'm guessing some kind of a Blessed Alliance that I'm going to walk into here. For those of you wondering, uh, if I plan to if I plan to block, what I'm going to do is animate the wilds, and if I plan to attack, I animate a regular land. The blocking thing is, if the opponent targets an evolving wilds with ride down, you can sacrifice it in response, and the creature never gains trample. Okay, yeah, that won't work for you. All right, fighting the good fight with uh, all the land I can find. My opponent drawing no shortage of land themselves. Oh, hello, that's bad. Uh, but I am definitely just gonna... If my opponent draws three cards, I think I lose anyway. Like, say that they're three expensive cards, my opponent can cast all of them, and I have nothing to compete. Say that they're bad cards, then we're in the same position, and I'd rather he just didn't draw it, so here we go. One has to be brave. Down goes Nissa. He had six. Hmm. But if he'd drawn that Nahiri, I'm pretty sure I'd be in a horrible spot anyway. Well, <laughs> where have you been? <laughs> where have you been hiding, you bastard? 
Um, all right. Yeah, I like that. If this gets countered, you may hear a grown man cry. And that's the late game we've been waiting for. And the crowd goes wild. Yay! TGB, if you could go back and draw 20 lands in a row to have the final draw at the crucial moment be the cards you needed, would you do it? Chandra Torch, what do you got? What do you do there? Oh, oh, ooh, I don't like that. Yeah, I'll choose a card. Um, I choose you, because you can get back another card. Chase? So, my opponent has had these sitting in his hand. What do you think? So my opponent's had like two or three cards in their hand the whole this whole time. So I imagine one of them was, oh, you know what? It was the double red. He was waiting for the double red land. That's what happened. So he had Chandra and he had Gear Hulk in his hand for a long time and never had double red to cast them because of the energy. Oh, there you go. That's what you get for four colors and double red cards. And then he just drew the Jace. Okay. I get it now. I get where this is all coming from. So... That said, what are we going to do? Seems like Ishkana would be great, but Planar Outburst top deck would be very bad. I think we just plus. I think we just get to work. Time to kill stuff. And we'll hold this. We might miss an ultimate, we might draw a tracker. And we've got this up for the fumarole. Our opponent drawing a vial. What can a vial draw him or her? Another land, ouch. Not what the doctor ordered. So what's his green mana do? Rogue Refiner, is that it? Is that the only reason to have green mana? I see Rogue Refiner. Probably a Tamiyo in here. Probably a Tamiyo. Oh, that ain't how you do it. Oh, all right. And Sad Face leaves game. And since we're just going to untap and swing for lethal, I will leave the game there too. But I have to walk my dog, so I have to go for a while. And uh, I hope that game was fun for everybody involved. Let's uh, do a quick decompress here. This was nuts. We got through half our deck exactly. 30 cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen lands. So the ratio is pretty much right where we want it. Our deck's surely about 60% lands, so that it lines up that way. All right. I will be back at 4 o'clock is my top 8 match, so come back for that, 4 p.m. Eastern. That's in about one and a half hours from now. So I hope to see several of you there, and uh, enjoy, in the meantime, the GP coverage. Laters.